Welcome back to another episode of the Community 21 series, and we're back here in the Baron Hall, and we'll be interviewing Aina McTaggart, who's the chair of the Queens Park uh, Women's Group here in the Glen Gormley area. I would say that to build strong community, you need to be able to build strong relations uh, across different generations, which is exactly what Aina has done over her time spent here in the community sector. Um, you can hear it from me, but I think you're better off hearing from the source itself. So here's what Aina had to say. Aina, thank you very much for being with us here tonight. I just wanted to see if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, and uh, your, your community group. Well, my name's Aina McTaggart. I'm part of Queen's Park Women's Group. I'm actually the chairperson of the group. We have been going now 12 years. Um, we have a great group of women, volunteers, all volunteers. There's no paid workers in our group. We are all volunteers. And we have been doing, we started off doing cross community work. And then we moved on to the older kids to get them training done try and get them an education. And then we moved to the women. We thought if we get the mothers in, then they'll trail the kids in. <laughs> they'll bring them in and stop them the antisocial behavior. So it seems to have worked okay for the past 12 years. I hope it keeps going. So. You, can you give us a few examples of some of the projects and, and some of the things you've worked on together? Well, we have worked on the drugs and alcohol awareness sex education and um, we have worked with the police and for the antisocial behaviour and we also done a course with, um, I'm sure you've heard of them, uh, Sport Changes Life. We've worked with them and with the boys, A Hoops and the girls, She Hoops. So we had uh, 105 kids at one time in our group and they've all been very successful. Um, a lot of the kids have went on now to further education. Some's a nurse, some's in university. So it did pay off in the end. You know, it was hard work like, but it paid off. And now it seems to be history repeating itself. It's starting all over again. So, and Kathy and myself are volunteers on a Friday night now on, in the around Glen Gormley with the antisocial behavior. So, so far so good. We've kept them calm. <laughs> so. And do you think it's very important to sort of have that engagement across generations? You have to, yeah. It's the only way it's going to work. You can't have one side or the other. You have to try and mingle both together. That seems to be the problem now with the young ones. They want to keep themselves to themselves and stay in their own wee group. They don't want the mix. So it's a hard, long job to try and get them in to come together, recognise each other as a person. Don't think of anybody as a religion. You know, you are all the same. So it's hard for the kids, you know. And I think it's a really hard when they're going to different schools. You know, one's going to one school, one's going to the other. And let's meet up, we'll have a fight here or we'll fight there. If they would have in, in, all go to the one school, integrated education, I think would be a great help. Excellent. It sounds like you've doing, been doing a lot of positive work over a long period of time. I was, wanted to ask, you know, part of this project is seeing what community groups did over COVID. I just wanted to ask uh, generally, uh, how were you and your community impacted by COVID? Uh, very hard at the time when it started down. Uh, Queen's Park, which I represent, I don't live in Queen's Park, but I'm part of their group. And a lot of them is single parents and old age pensioners. And it was very hard for a lot of the people in there for COVID. You know, for one, a lot was shielding. No medical problems, they couldn't get out and they had nobody to do. A lot of the supermarkets hadn't started doing any deliveries and it was a panic station where we're getting this. And, and then the council came up with the food boxes to start with, which I can say was bloody heavy. <laughs> and they asked us, would we participate in the food distributing? We had 62 boxes. We included another uh, area in Glen Gormley because they didn't have a community group, so their people were actually being left out. 
and we asked council then could we incorporate so many boxes for that area so they gave us an extra 26 boxes for them to use so I had to deliver the boxes to the other group area, take them to them and then get volunteers to come in to try and council would have referred people to us in the area. They contacted the COVID line, you know, if they were stuck and they needed. A lot of people struggled. A lot of people struggled. And as we said at the time, the boxes was good, but there was nothing you could make a meal with. You know, you remember getting a tin of peas or a tin of sweet corn or chickpeas. We who in this day and age uses chickpeas, bread, no butter. You know, you were getting potatoes, but you weren't getting any meat to make with it, so there was nothing really you could have made a meal with. Mm. And so the second time round then, they came out with the food pallets. So rather than the way we'd done it the first time, with the boxes, different areas, uh, Community Relations Forum, Cathy, and myself thought we will get together, we will work this together, and they came big pallets of food to the main Antrim Road and we had to get it from there up into here, which was blooming hard. But we done it. And we went out, Kathy and myself went out delivering to people that we knew were in need. It had to be people because you, you did get some people that wasn't need, it was greed. You know, I'm entitled to this so I want it, no, well I'm sorry. And you had to be very hard at some times when people phoned you up and said, well, such and such got a box and I need a box. Well, no, you don't need a box. You know, pensioners, for one, their benefits didn't stop. They were still getting the same money. And, you know, it was hard to explain to them, you know, this is for the needy. You still have the money. You can phone Tesco's, book an order. And we did have people and had to stop. I actually phoned council and told them they weren't getting no boxes because I witnessed it myself, taking the box, and then their delivery coming from Tesco's. You know, so it was just greedy people. You know, it's there and I, taking it for nothing, and I'll spend my money on something else. I'll take it, and I'll be, no, no, we won't do that. So we had to be very hard at times. People didn't like it. But it was the only way to be fair. Hmm. And it sounds like you learned a lot from the, that first experience and were able to adapt into the second one. Do, yeah. you, th- do you think that... Um, obviously, there's some negative things that came with that, but that learning experience, do you feel that that could be a positive, positive thing moving forward should crises come oh, up yes. in the future? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does. It makes you more aware. And then, you know, like for just, I had a pensioner. The council had sent the pensioner's name to me. And it wasn't, he did have his money, but his car had broke down and it was stuck in the car showroom. So he couldn't get out, he lived alone. He couldn't get out to get any shopping. And he had a donkey. He couldn't get out to get the donkey hay. And I'm going, how do we feed the donkey? <laughs> and it was actually my granddaughter came with two bales of hay to me in our centre. And I went, where did you get the hay? I couldn't sleep, she says, thinking of the poor donkey, no hay. You know, so it wasn't just people we were feeding, it was their animals. You know, people with dogs couldn't get dog food. So we had to go out and buy the dog food because it didn't come with the, the food parcels. You know, and you just, you knew who was the needy ones, who were genuine. It did learn you a lesson. And if, if you don't mind me asking, what, what drives you towards this, this type of work? I mean, obviously it takes an incredible, incredible amount of empathy, but also being able to, it sounds like, screen people in some of these situations. Yeah. But is that a driving force, do you think? It is, yeah, because whenever I come into the group, it was to do with children. I had a grandson that got into a bit of bother. They just moved here from Wales and they were classed as foreigners because they had the accent and he got into a bit of bother on Halloween night and that's how we found out what went on in Glengormley. Like I had lived here for 20 odd years and didn't know there was a problem in Glengormley because I was on the outskirts and that's how I got into it. I thought, God, this can't go on. Look at them kids are murdering one another and me and my daughter just came out onto the streets. We didn't have a centre or nothing. We just done it in the street. Let's go out and see. And we walked the street seven nights a week to separate two sides from, you know. And it paid off. It worked. A lot of people didn't like it. Thought, who does these women think they are? But as a mother and a grandmother myself, you know, when I seen him getting into a bit of bother, 
totally unexpected. He just threw fireworks at him and he lifted it and threw it back. The rest were all false faced and he didn't have a mask on, so he was the one that was caught. And he didn't even know who they were or what they were because he had only been here a couple of weeks. <laughs> so he didn't even know what the troubles was like here. But we learnt the hard way and it paid off in the end. And hard work, but sure. Absolutely. And um, like, as, as you've said, there's been some obviously difficult periods over COVID. The, the entire period is, has been difficult. But have you seen also some inspiring things coming out from members of the community over the time as well? Yeah, well, uh, people coming together to help each other, you know, because a lot of the times now before COVID, people kept themselves to themselves, you know, they didn't close their doors. But now I would find in Queen's Park especially, you know, people were looking after each other. You know, they would, somebody would have phoned me and said, there's a wee lady now in such and such, and she doesn't have much. You know, if you can help. We've had people over Christmas. We had to go out and source toys for them because they weren't having any, no money coming in. They'd lost their jobs, so the kids were getting nothing for Christmas. And the estate rallied round to raise money for her to get the stuff that she needed. Christmas dinner, and um, we got our toys, five bags of toys for our wee daughters, dolls and proms. You know, so the community was starting to look after each other then, which made a difference, I thought. Excellent. And building on what you've learned over COVID, what are your plans for after lockdown with the group? Um, do you feel COVID in some ways has, has po positively influenced what, what you may be doing in the future? Yeah, I hope well, we have a lot of courses to be done cross community and cross border. And the women just can't wait to get back. Tomorrow night will be their first night back now from the very start of COVID. They haven't been in the centre at all. And they just can't wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As you can't wait to get to the Bellevue, they can't wait to get to the centre. <laughs> You're not supposed to be telling people that, but. That's right, that's right. That's what it is. Yeah, <laughs> And just last question here for you, Anna. Um, uh, what's your message for the community at this time as we come out of lockdown? Um, look after each other. And respect. I would say respect for a lot of people, you know. We have enough going on with COVID without anything else, with the antisocial behaviour or anything, you know, coming. And safety. You know, we might be coming through it, but we're not through it yet. We don't want another lockdown. So if people would just abide by the rules and do what they're told to do, wear a mask, keep two metres, well, it's one metre now, isn't it? Keep one metre apart and follow the rules that we don't end up in another lockdown, that people will be able to carry on as normal and not be looking help from outside. Excellent, Anna. Well, we look forward to much more to come from the Queen's Park Women's yeah. Group, and uh, we look forward to seeing you out in the community soon. Yep. Thank you.